Meeting of September 28th, 2021. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six members present. One member from the Stockbridge Select Board. And two, I don't see Chucky up there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glasses on. I didn't recognize him. <laughs> glasses on. Can you hear us? Don't know. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. If anybody can hear, let us know. You may be muted, but that's all right. Just let us know if you can hear us. All right, let's uh, vote on the approval of the minutes of the August 24th meeting. Everyone's had a chance to look at those. Any comments, corrections, motions? I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Use a minute. Mm-hmm. I approve. Yeah. We have a couple informal requests, meetings, informationals. Up first, John Davies. Yes. Sir, what would you like to ask about? Stone wall repair yes, to I Yale have, Hill. I have some, a proposal. I don't know whether Sally had a chance to hand these out, but. I forwarded that there, Ron. Okay, and right. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Just, here, I'll take them and pass. Oh, yeah, actually, okay. I'll be doing all because I got these okay. in between them. And it, basically, what we're doing Happy. is restacking our stone wall. We have a stone wall, and uh, just repairing it because it's, it's, it's kind of bad. Water behind it, and, and some of the stones are in danger of falling out. And so I emailed Sally, and she suggested that I get a formal proposal, which is on the front here. It's from Andy Johnson, who is a stonemason, and Chris Johnson, landscaper. You probably know Chris, is uh, going to help him with this job. And basically, it's a matter of Taking up the stones and uh, and restacking them, and when 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 they're restacked, they're going to um, put in some sort of crushed stone behind the stone walls for drainage purposes, so that hopefully uh, this will last through my grandchildren's lifetime at the least. But that's all it is. And the reason I'm here is because our stone wall. If you look on. Page three. There's a little map there. It's actually a photograph. Uh, it looks like looks like this, mm -hmm. and you can see our house, and you can see stone wall, and then Campusa Brook uh, comes down. It's about uh, I'd say 30 to 40 feet away. You can see the measurements of our lot there, and uh, so. But that's why I'm here. Is because you know we are, are close enough to the the brook that Chris Johnson and, and Sally suggested that I come and and uh, you know, see if this is going to be. Well, I think this is definitely a site visit. We don't need to belabor here. Um, yeah, we're going to ask about what if you're going to use equipment. Yes, there and, there would be an excavator, a little, and and the equipment would be entirely on sort of the other side of, from the brook, the, the west side of our stone wall. And then Chris Johnson's gonna run that. He's gonna, basically they would sort of reach over and pick up the stones, you know, and stack them on our driveway. You can see our driveway there. And, uh, and then slowly put them back at the same time putting in digging a trench essentially behind where the stone wall is now and putting in some crushed stone for drainage purposes so that hopefully this won't 
be necessary again in the future. So you're going to disassemble the wall, set it aside, clear behind where the soil was up against the wall. Yes. Build the wall back, stone behind the wall. Exactly. And then, yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we probably would like to swing by and just take a look at it. That'd be fine. And whenever you mm -hmm. want to do that, we uh, do a few visits on Fridays usually. Okay. We're available this Friday. Yep. Uh, yep. Friday, 10 o'clock. Friday, 10 o'clock, be fine. I am. I'm not, but it's okay. Uh, okay. We'll you there. Okay. And we'll give you an opinion on if you got to go any farther than this or if we're good with it. Good. Okay. Yeah, you, yes, sir. We have a sort of joint driveway. You pull into the, the uh, Briggs. Up Yale Hill. First driveway right. on the right. Right? Yeah. And then it's the first driveway on the right. Mm -hmm. Then again, the first driveway on the right. That's us. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you then. Um, Brett White. Good evening. All right. Plan revision. Yes, well, I appreciate you making time for me on such a short notice uh, this afternoon here. This matter uh, just came to my attention today. Um, the property is uh, to Lakeview Drive. This is a property that the commission has reviewed. Uh, we propose a notice of intent for drainage improvements on the order of 12 years ago. Uh, that work was completed and a certificate of compliance was issued. Um, the property has sold and the, the current owner is considering um, exploring uh, constructing an addition of the home. Uh, with the goal being that the, the addition would be on the rear of the home and no closer to the limits of bordering vegetative wetland than the existing house. And we are seeking your guidance to see if those, if uh, as a part of the final architectural design of the addition, if we were able to maintain the same setback to the, wet, the limit of the wetlands as the existing home, if that is a, a proposal the commission would be uh, willing to undertake. I'm happy to share my screen if, if you don't have that uh, in front of you. Which one are we dealing with here? Brett White, two Lakefield Drive, second and final. Uh, please, yes. Give us a quick, we're gonna do a site visit, but let's do a quick review of this now. Sure, well, uh, very briefly in the center of the screen is the existing home. Uh, what you see highlighted in green was the limit of bordering vegetative wetland as approved under the previous notice of intent. Uh, what you see in dark black that is if you follow my cursor was a series of sub drains that were installed and uh, working quite well um, and the magenta again is a very very uh, crude approximation of where a proposed addition would be um, constructed on the home and uh, again the goal would be that that would not be any closer to the limit of wetlands than the existing home but i certainly can appreciate the, the desire to to see the property for yourself before um, giving any additional feedback mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think that's going to be a necessity Okay. Um, we're going out Friday as it is. 1030-ish? 10.30 uh, works, and I will verify with Shannon and I which one of us will be there, but uh, someone from our office will be there then. 10.32, Lakeview. Two Lakeview. Which, which Lakeview? I, I'm still lost here. I have the correct inversion here. Down Beach. Way around. <laughs> Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Two Lakeview Drive, Friday at ten. Which one? Thank you very much. We'll see you on Friday morning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Friday at what? Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm already going. Oh, it's the rear of the property. That's because I sent them out again. There's, you should never, never assume that the one that you got. Well, last I just get the one that I don't get tonight. This is the last one I got. So it's where not is tonight. Two, where's two like you? It's it. not. It's not there. It's not there. It doesn't say it. it says Brett White. So did this one have a cutting plan associated with one that was just completed before the show? That's from uh, Gottlieb. The two uh, Lakeview. Yeah, it's Gottlieb. Can we make sure that we have that at the new site visit? Okay. Brent? Make sure we have what? The new, the old cutting plant from the one that we had approved. 
I'm happy to have a copy of the old plan as well as the uh, the diagram that we just shared with you via email today. That's not a problem. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think that that Gottlieb is not the current owner. Am I right, Brett? Uh, yes, ma'am. That is correct. But that's what's on the plan. Uh, correct. It was it was the the plan that we had for the property for the purposes of showing the the structure and the limit of bordering vegetative wetland and the proposed addition. All right. Check off some of these that just keep appearing. Yeah, we don't need Han. We don't need Han's gone. So, can, can I ask a question? I don't know if Housatonic Railroad is because they were supposed can, to be here tonight. I don't know if they are. Can I ask a question here? What? Um, these things keep coming back, you know. That's right. Uh, they do. One, 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 they haven't been cleared out. Well, is there a way to clear them out? No. Yeah, yeah, once they come here and. Once they come here and clear it out. Take care of it. Clear it out. Well, is there a can letter that we can write to them saying we'd really like we've to get this done? To, we've talked to them a few times and, yeah. Foresight was going to step into. Yeah, Foresight was going to do something about the beach hot wood. thing. I mean, Greylock design is supposed to decline. But, well, Rob Rob is on tonight, I think. He's on with something else. Um, so and maybe we'll ask him he's, that. No, he's got a jurisdictional win, so we can ask him. He said he was going to resubmit, but he hasn't withdrawn this one. Mackinac Terrace, haven't heard anything more on that one. So the first, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The first two. With we're First two are pending. And pending, okay. Pending as long as they're unresolved. Okay, no railroad. Railroad, we haven't heard back from anyone. They asked to They asked to extend it to tonight, but I don't know if there's anybody here. Okay, thank you. Mackinac Terrace was the removal and stairs and stuff. I haven't heard anything more about that. Okay. Uh, Four Cove Lane. That is on for tonight. Mike All is right. here. Mike. Hi, gang. Four Cove Lane. Video. So at the um, last meeting, we talked about a kind of a handful of things. Um, there was some concern over that we had proposed a um, shallow frost protected uh, concrete slab. Um, I don't see Pam here, but since then, the um, they've discussed with the owners the idea of um, peers just Helical, uh, helical piers and framed up, a framed up structure rather than um, <clears throat> rather than any con or rather than most of the concrete. There'll still be a little bit of concrete. If we show a um, kind of an umbilical cord to uh, to get utilities from the structure down into the ground. Um, that would can I share my screen? Um, anyone? Is that? Yeah, sure. So you got it. Go for it. That's a yes. Coming at you. So same, same footprint as we had talked about last time we met a while back. Um, again, no, no concrete slab, just hill piers and framed up, framed up structure. There was an umbilical, a utility umbilical kind of in the center of the structure that would just get utilities down, down into the ground. Otherwise the area underneath the structure would just, it would be crushed stone and kind of remain remain un, uh, unbuilt upon other than some piers. Uh, a couple other things, I know we talked about some, the we had a planting area kind of shown to the south in the corner over here. That's been readjusted to run along the entire, this frontage along the lake. That's about 100 and, 150 square feet or so of, of plantings. Um, Can you say what will be planted there, Mike? We just said kind of native, non-invasive shrubs. Um, we just we have such a hard time kind of nailing down plants these days that um, I can get you sort of an official list before anything goes. But uh, native, non-invasives is what we would. About native, non-invasive wetland. Yeah, well, it's pretty wet there, so it would probably be something like red osier and that that sort of thing. It's certainly a wet spot, so I would plan on on wetland species. Mm -hmm. uh, doing well there. That um, was something that Mark, um, Mark Stinson also mentioned about um, creating a better buffer zone along there. Yeah, in, the, 
In the center there, the bank was really eroding. If, if they could plant heavier right in the center where the bank was really eroding into the lake, give it some protection. Yeah, was it on the kind of on the lake side of the bank or was it on the um, kind of house side? House side. It, was on, it was on the lake side, right? Yeah, it was like on the left side. Okay, so yeah, so the- uh, I mean, it's pretty the, obvious if you look at it, it's, it's going right into the lake. Yeah, I don't know if there's a if there's a, a, a particular area we could try and get some some plugs in it, some plugs in in addition to uh some, it's just it's kind of hard that that bank is it's such a an odd bank it's a bit of a burn there um we could probably get some plugs some plugs in or something like that to stabilize that that area of, of bank um if there is a sort of a surgical surgical implant of of vegetation there we, we're happy to to incorporate anything like that. Um, the other question, the other big question, I guess that came up was how to handle um, any disturbance to the road. And with the um, kind of with stepping away from concrete, there'll be at least a, a, a few less real heavy loads kind of coming and going from here. There'll still be, you know, there'll still be some demo. There'll be a dumpster that'll, a couple dumpsters that will come and go on trucks. Um, the construction is proposed to be panelized, so there'd be probably one or two sizable loads that they'll they'll probably have to take them off on the you know outside of Cove and bring them in a few pieces at a time. Um, but what we proposed in our notes was, I mean, we could go in there and put some fabric down and put a bunch of gravel down. I just I don't know that it's going to be necessary. Um, so we talked about. Uh, just monitoring monitoring during construction and if, if you know if we have a dry a dry fall um chances yeah. are things will remain stable but if it's real wet we'll have to do something I, I guess our thought was let's monitor it during construction and if and when the time comes put down some fabric and some gravel i just i don't want to go to the effort of doing that and just have it create more of a more of a mess than if we put it down we've got to take it out um so if if we monitor it during construction, and if it needs some improvement, we can do that. And if not, we won't have gone through the effort of kind of installing something we'd have to take out. Um, and we added another note just to to make sure the road remains passable to the to the um, sort of last house on the on the north end of the road, um, just to make sure the road remains accessible throughout throughout the course of the work. Um, they're going to have to kind of come up with an arrangement to get contractors in and out and find areas to park because we know it's a tight site and there's just limited limited access. But we'll have to work out those details with the contractor and his um, his men, his people. Who's going to do the monitoring? Well, for the road, I can do the monitoring, or whoever you feel is acceptable. Um, Okay. Yeah. However that uh, however that works best, we can do it. We can do it kind of from our office, or um, if you have somebody else in mind, or if the owner, I, we can do it. I guess is the best I can offer right now without having the I, owner handy. Yeah, Mike. I think that would be best. You're going to be back and forth down there, and you're going to have to make the call on whether the whether the expense is going to have to be used or not. So. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Um, is there a way that you can kind of give us an outlined version of the sequence of work on this project? You mean kind of a verbal quick and dirty now, John? No. Well, when's it, when's it going to start? Well, we've, we have a ways to go. We still have to get through with um, with planning board, and that's that meeting is next week. So um, I can give you a written a written uh, sequence of events if that's helpful. Sure. Yeah, I think it would be. And that the old building is still existing, right? Mm -hmm. What is? Yeah. Nothing's been done all shit. Right. right. Okay. Hey, one more question. There was a um, outside shower on the building. I think we would like to condition no outside shower on the new one. It's not permitted. Yeah, you can condition that, but I think it's not allowed anyway. So. Okay, I'd still like to condition it. Sure. 
Yep. There's one there now. Oh, wow. Mm -mm. In the whole town? No, that's close know. to the lake. No, so near the lake. Yeah. Well, I can save myself a few dollars on my plumber. <laughs> if it had a roof over it and could be captured by the septic uh, system, it could probably be at least permitted by Title V, but otherwise it's a... And there's no no trees being cut, right? That's right, no trees being cut. Okay. Thank you. Including brush? No. Nope. I got pictures on this one. Okay. Um, we've already been. Mm -hmm. We want the sequence of work. Yeah, send us a sequence of work. Okay. And uh, we'll move from there. Okay. And that and the planning board would be good to know what they they think on this too. So okay. All right. Till the next one. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, one Park Street. Um, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Who's the driveway? Hi, Nicole. That's me. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. What else? Have, what What new have you come up with? What new have I come up with? How are you talking about moving it? Have you got uh, drawings or anything? Or um, yeah, yeah I, I emailed some drawings. All right, hang on. And I put up flags last time I spoke uh, to the committee, they said that they would drive by before the next meeting. And so I put up some flags approximately where the new driveway would be. I drove by. Yeah. There's no issue. Great. Opinion is there's no issue. Um, no. Did they need another curve cut? Hmm? Use no, the same curve cut? She had. Um, the new driveway is theoretically shorter than the old driveway. The old driveway. And okay. they're going to reseed. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nicole. Uh, yes, we will reseed. They're going to reseed the area that they're taking out that was, you know, with the current driveway. So it's a net loss of impervious surface. Mm -hmm. So that should be a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, I would go as far as to close the hearing. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. All right, make a motion to close the hearing. I second it. Any opposed? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. You got a new driveway. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks. We did go. Okay, request for extension. Hey, Ron, this is from 2006. I think. I don't know if Jay by is on. He called me about Called you about this? Yeah. Hey, the driveway? No. Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Larry Wog Land Trust. Oh. Yeah. Anyone here, Larry Wog Land yeah, Trust? Yeah, Judy's here. I saw her on the list. Um, I Still with us? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Um, so Judy, the only question, this is this is a project from 2006 and this is the building that's up the road in back, is that correct? Yeah, there's nothing there. There's just right. a road, you know, a pathway that we put in. And um, the only question I had was if there were changes to the um, wetlands since 2006. No, nothing has been done up there. We were hoping to, because we had sold our West Oppridge property, but um, prices have kind of gone through the roof right now. So we're kind of on hold, hoping that the costs will come down. It's been extended a few times. Yes. Ready. Originally one was in 2006. Mm -hmm. So we two years extension? Three. Three. And we're 
within the time frame that's required. How many times can they do it? Many times they want, I guess, as long as we permit it. All right. Um, it's probably not going to do it anytime soon. We'll give you the extension one more time. Okay. Then we, then we may need to do some new paperwork and stuff, okay? Okay, so that sounds good. fine. So you're good for three years. And we then to vote. Yeah, then you'll have to come back to us. So Okay. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we extend this for another three year period. Oh, second it. Second. Any opposition? All opposed? Oh, yeah, all well, opposed. Yeah. All <laughs> Hi. Okay. Three years. <clears throat> Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Judy. Bye. 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 Thank you. Two Partridge Lane Screen Porch with Addition. Jonathan Stern. Again, you... that's, that's me again. Can't get rid of that guy. Hey, Mike. I know. I heard that. <laughs> Welcome to the swamp. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. So. Two, two partridge link. A friend of mine. So I don't know if I need to raise his You do not. You, you go down the road, and it's one, two, three, the fourth one on the left. You get down there, and it's the first house in on the right. Okay. It's a little red cottage yeah. sitting up on piers. I've been down there so many times now, I'm starting to know houses. And it's got a, across the street's a guy named Miller. Anyway. So, yeah, and, do you guys have my screen up there? Is that showing up? Yes. Yeah. So the existing, kind of the darker, uh, darker rectangle is the existing, and there's a screen porch on the back. The proposal is to convert the screen porch into part of the structure and, and, add this addition so it's about a a total of about 30 by 12 um is this entire area it'd be on piers the structure now is on piers it's it's the site is very wet um i don't think i would try and do anything else but something on piers if they do anything um i have a, a bit of the architectural here if this is helpful um this is not helpful at all like, is this a year round house or seasonal? It's just a cottage. It's a kind of an open underneath cottage that um, these occasional, um, occasional three activity. Three season. Seasonal, but it has heat. Yeah, right. So the, um, this, this is the existing, kind of the existing deck up front would stay, um, existing structure. And this is the addition, this 30 by 12. Again, on piers, it would kind of just be tied to tied to the existing structure, and um, they got reasonable access into the site for for construction. They're on town sewer. They'd have to do something with the town sewer while they're doing doing the work, but um, they'd have to just temporarily disconnect. And they got an existing well that would continue to serve the um, the property. We showed a just to protect the I mean, this. This is the tree line. There's a bit of a tree line around the property. Um, so we showed us, we show erosion controls here that would pretty much follow the tree line. It's a, it's a, just a real modest area to work inside of. So they're a bit, a bit hemmed in. Are there any trees to take down? Uh, no, no, no trees. This, this addition will be the roof as well. I'll say that again. Run. Well, well they use the screen porch. Well, if it's a screen porch, it has a roof. Yeah, yeah everything, everything would be kind of tied to the house. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it's any good to have a screen porch with no roof. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, what's the distance to the BVW? Uh, it's right there. It's right yeah, there. It's, it's right. I mean, Existing. So, yeah. so what's what's the improvement to the wetland? If they're if they're mm -hmm. the loss of I don't know how many feet that's going to be covered up. Can you do? Yeah, I, we're uh, I guess we're we're we didn't show any 
kind of updated plantings or we didn't show any improvement to the wetland. <laughs> so um, no. we can't. We're hemmed yeah, in by anything. Can we see it? Can yeah, see that, it? yeah, that's what we should do. Yeah. Site visit again? Yeah. Friday. Eleven o'clock. <laughs> can you Friday make it eleven? Can you do that with Mike? Friday, Friday at eleven? Sure, yep. Friday at eleven, thank you. And if you can think about an improvement somewhere, that would be Yeah, good. we can look. We can take a look while we're out there. I mean, I, maybe there's some invasives or maybe there's something there that um, there shouldn't be there. Or, yeah, we can have a look. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mike, before, yep. before, before you go, I mean, you know, well, there are a lot of dead trees there, for one thing. But, um, you know, there's that stream that runs down on the south end of the property. Yeah. It is all silted in, and I don't know if there's anything that can be constructively done there to make that flow a little bit better. I think it would keep the property itself um, a bit drier if it weren't, you know, so silted in. That's, that's a whole. Just, that's a whole other ball of wax. Yeah, now. it's a whole other ball of wax. But nevertheless, that's. I get DEP involved in something like yeah. that. Yeah. No. Okay. Well. Yeah, that's a bit of a can of worms. We can we can peek into it, but I don't know if we want to. All right. Well, we'll look at it. We can have a look. Yeah, maybe there's something smart up there we can do. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, Mike. Yep. I was only kidding when I said that. <laughs> sure, you are. <laughs> I'm, leaving, right. I'm leaving for leaving for good. Goodbye. <laughs> now, Certificate of compliance. I was going to ask before we move on. Um, you know, I, I've been wandering around Beachwood on my bicycle and I'm walking and those brooks that are running through Beachwood yeah. are, are all getting silted in. And what they're doing as a result of getting silted in is they're overflowing on the people's property. So, you know, somebody like Mike might have, you know, a designated what is a designated wetland or the bordering edge of a wetland. I mean, almost everywhere in Beachwood, that's gone out the window. A few more years, there won't even be a brook there. Be yeah, the whole thing will be, the whole thing will be a swamp. So I guess my point my point is is that you know it's not only it's not only unique to John Stern's property. They're rivers, it, it, though. It's unique to right, but it's unique to the whole dam. Yeah, but somebody who is going to who's going to fund it I mean, and fund it and apply for the work that has to be done. Well, it's up to them as to whether they want to keep yeah. from living in a swamp. A, they should be coming deal. to us about this, not us going to them. No, I know. I'm just bringing it to the table because yeah. it is an issue that's going to yeah. come it's before a, these people who live there. It's yeah. a big hairy deal, though. I, I'm not going to disagree with you. It's there's, a big there's hairy an issue deal. There. Well, you know, it, it's a big hairy deal and all that, but it's, it's it's something that needs to be dealt with. And it starts up next to the road and goes all the way down. All right. For this one. Back to uh, Levinson. Levinson Weber Nominee Trust, 23 Mackinac Road, White Engineering. Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Wow. What are you doing? Hello, everybody. I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, again, Brent White from White Engineering, for the record. Um, so we have submitted a request for certificate of compliance and uh, Sally was kind enough to meet me a couple of weeks ago to review this file dating back to 2004. And at the time there was a, an order of conditions issued for an addition on the non lakeside house, um, side of the house, um, as well as some other uh, site improvements. And uh, after reviewing the property, it's clear that uh, the only work under that order of condition that had occurred was the removal of a single tree. Uh, we have submitted photographic evidence to demonstrate that there were no additions built to the house itself. And uh, this property is under contract to be sold. So we would uh, respectfully request that the uh, certificate of compliance be granted. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Are you the original applicator? Appl no. No? Someone else? Uh, that, uh, Hill Engineers have prepared that plan. And I did submit a, a photo of the site plan. And I could pull it up on my screen if anyone would like to see that. Please. Yeah, this is going to be a basically no work done one. Correct. Correct. So I apologize for the quality of the, the image here, but uh, on the left-hand side of the screen is Stockbridge Bowl. 
uh, where my cursor is, where the uh, existing structure is. And then in this vicinity was the proposed addition um, and that we submitted a photo of the back of the house that showed that this addition was not cleared. And then uh, this one tree uh, where my cursor is, is what was removed and I had submitted a photo from the house looking back towards Mackinac Road that showed that that tree was no longer there, uh, but that is the only work that was completed. So when's this picture taken? Recently. That was uh, about a month or so ago. And there's the back of the house with no addition. Mm -hmm. So I spent some time going through the files with Brent. Thank you for that. So, so this is this is the picture of where the tree was removed, and this is the picture. This is the picture of the back of the house where the addition was not put right, on. Right. Thank you. Well, I guess this is fairly cut and dry. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure the new people are going to have other ideas, but good, we'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll do a certificate of compliance for this. I will make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Berkshire Gas. Anyone here from Berkshire Gas? He knows he's on. They're, they're requesting to um, existing gas line replacement replace. Yeah, exactly. The existing gas line. I have a question for them. But since they're not here. I can't ask a question. I guess we'll continue. Continued. Foresight, BSO Tanglewood. Everybody, they needed that irrigation system upgrade this year. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Jackson Alberti with Foresight Plan Services, here to represent the applicant, uh, BSO Tanglewood. This is an application for a stormwater management and erosion control uh, permit. This Under, is the um, addition, basically, to the one that Mark presented, what, two years ago, three years correct. ago? Correct, yeah, the order of conditions was issued January 15th, 2021. So not that long ago. Um, and that was for the replacement of this uh, existing spillway structure, which has been completed. Um, and the second uh, phase of that work was the installation of this uh, irrigation pond and, and its associated uh, structures. <laughs> um, what triggers the need for this application of stormwater management and erosion control permit is land disturbance greater than 10,000 square feet. Uh, the pond itself is around 11,400 square feet in surface area. Um, the increase in uh, impervious, surface, impervious surface area of more than 2,000 square feet. Um, the pond itself is gonna be lined, so that is uh, technically considered impervious surface. And then the storage of greater than 100 cubic yards of soil, um, which will be excavated from the proposed pond area and deposited uh, lower down, which I can talk about in a second. Uh, the construction of the new irrigation pond was permitted under an order of conditions uh, that we just talked about in January. And uh, the pond is proposed to be lined, so it'll be technically impervious, um, but will obviously collect stormwater, um, which would be used for either irrigation or would uh, overflow through this 12 inch gate valve uh, into the existing pond or would then be outletted through the existing spillway. So there's no new uh, stormwater discharge points uh, associated with this project to be maintained. Any water that's collected by the impervious surface uh, of this pond will then be discharged there. So the existing irrigation pond isn't big enough? Apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess they have the need for uh, an additional area of story for, for irrigation. Um, what do they irrigate? Uh, the various lawns, uh, particularly up associated with like the mu music sheds and, and those areas, uh, I think that's their, their main concern, keeping those 
those lawns nice for all the people that that sit and picnic on them and stuff like that um, i don't believe they irrigate these uh grass parking areas but that's something no. i'm not, not positive um, no <laughs> for the, the old zawa hall lawn yeah. and the new building they have a small pond but the piping is such they can transfer water from one one zone to the other and this this is the major supply of water that can be pumped up the hill and then transferred to both the main lawn main house lawn um anything around the shed and the theater and then everything over towards Ozawa Hall and Highwood. The whole campus. <laughs> and Lindy Center as well. Yes. Uh, oh, Ron <laughs> Well, that was after me, so and what yeah, but yes. What is it? Sorry if you said it and I missed it, but what is it right now? Before right now this area is existing lawn. So uh there's an existing tree line that goes around here. Uh, I wouldn't call it lawn. But yeah, I guess meadow. <laughs> it is routinely it's, mowed. It's a wet area. Yeah, um, this uh, bordering vegetated wetland area, the area shown in green, uh, follows uh, what is proposed so to gone through all this kind of surrounds the existing area. pond. And then all this area yeah. down here as well is bordering vegetated wetland. So, Patrick? No tree. Pardon? What's the gauge of the what's the gauge of the fencing around all of the current lawn, uh, for, uh, the current pond and the proposed pond, pond? And is it possible to ensure wildlife, you know, uh, uh, interaction between the pond and the surrounding bordering better vegetative wetland without a really onerous uh, uh, fence? Fence is there now. Well, I don't know what's there now exactly. I believe it's like a wooden post fence. So I think there's. Yeah, the current fence does not permit um, wildlife passage. Right. So that we, we permit, talked we, about that at the in the um, uh, notice of intent, the order of conditions. We talked about that. I don't know if we said anything in the order of conditions. I can't remember. My suggestion being that we make that order of conditions. Yeah. Well, this is a this is under the town stormwater bylaw. So, right. but Tanglewood should be encouraged to. You can't do order of conditions there? Permit. We can, even if it's a wet meadow, it's not covered under wetland? It's already gone through the yeah. Wetlands Protection okay. Act. Yeah, this is this is the storm water bylaw. This has all been delineated and feel and accepted under a, an order of conditions. Um, so, yeah, the only real proposed uh, alteration to BBW uh, would be the installation of the, the gate valve there. <laughs> What's the bottom of the pond like? Is that what's that? What's the bottom of the pond? It's going to be a, a plastic lining. Um, I don't know the exact material, but it's a it's a thick, robust lining that prevents any infiltration to and from groundwater. Um, so this will be completely isolated from that. Uh, it'll be its own its own body of water. It has the fencing already been installed. I'm not entirely positive, uh, not around this area of the pond. The fencing along this existing roadway there, I know last time I was there, it was being replaced um, with like a, a chain link fence, um, but I don't know uh, to what extent they got to. Um, so. has, it, has the excavation even started on this? This? Yeah. No, not as far, I, I don't believe so. How, how deep is it? Uh, I think it'll be 11 feet deep at its deep this point. Um, it'll be, uh, 1,575 cubic yards, uh, which is about 318,000 gallons. Um, so it's a sizable uh, little pond. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about 11,400 square feet in surface area. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd also, I also just need to touch on the uh, where all the soil will be deposited, which is another reason for this permit. Um, that 1,575 cubic yards of soil will be taken from the pond area and down the hill uh, on this existing access road and will be uh, deposited and spread relatively thin, probably one to two feet uh, along this uh, hillside here uh, at the base of the Lionsgate lot. Um, 
and that'll obviously be surrounded with uh, silk fence and straw bales that it's down grady inside. Um, and the idea being to spread it there was there's plenty of open space where they don't need to alter a lot of existing vegetation apart from lawn and they can spread it out and uh, just kind of grade it into the side of that hill. So it's a mound anywhere. it will just kind of lessen the, uh, the steepness of that slope there. Which side? They spreading into the south of the pond or the north? Mm -hmm. um, place that that. Down at like the base, the, the downhill most point of the Lions Gate lot, right? On the right. And how many you know, I, I know where everything is, but which direction is the fill going? Uh, the fill will then be taken out towards the Lions Gate or towards the pond? The toward the goal. Toward Lions Gate south. Uh, and how south. far from the, the bowl? Uh, approximately 305 feet is its closest point. So um, this is stormwater capturing um, and rain capturing and stuff like that. How do you plan on channeling the water into this pond or is it just going to come out of the sky? There's, there's a well. Right? Yeah, there's, there's a well that'll be the well that pumps into that pond and an existing well. So that'll just be our new line will be run to connect to this uh, pond. Okay. My next question is, is between the time it leaves out of those two ponds and the time that it hits the sprinklers at Tanglewood, what's going to be mixed with it? I have, I have nothing as far as I know. Well, I don't understand the question. What would Any be mixed with Fertilizers, herbicides, herbicides, pesticides, pesticides herbicides. insect killers. I mean, you don't find many ticks on the lawn at Tanglewood. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there is a tank of some sorts there. Yeah, there is. I know nothing about it. Yeah, I know. And we, when we went to the site visit the last time we went around this, you know, they were skirting that issue like it was a tarantula. And it's like, it's a concern because what you put on the lawn at Tanglewood is going to end up either in those ponds or in Stockbridge Bowl. Yeah, I, I completely understand your concern. Um, I'm, I'm not there when they're, they're, you know, doing that kind of thing, but um, I can, I can assure you they know your feelings. I get a recluse on, uh, <laughs> on pesticides on the lawns. Um, so they, they know that would not. I truly do not understand well. the direction of the fill though. Why would you push the fill uphill when, towards the bowl? There's a big flat area there. I'm, I'm confused. The, uh, the fill being the taken out of the pond here? Yeah. Where's the existing pond right now? The existing pond's here. All right. Why don't they push it to the left instead of to the right? This direction? Yeah. Yeah, that's where they're taking it, to this. Well, that's, that's, that's towards the Stockbridge Bowl. Yes, yes right it goes here. it goes There's down. Right. Okay, down. The, we were talking the same place, but in a different language. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's about three hundred and five feet is the existing tree line there from the edge of Stockbridge Bowl, and this will be just up gradient of that in the in the existing lot there. Um, and then obviously, if you went the other direction, if you go right into a swamp. Yeah, yeah, this is all BBW right here, um, and none of that is proposed to be altered. This is all proposed to be accessed from this uh, this proposed gravel path here. So that'll be through the lot, access to the area, so there'll be no alteration to this large area of wetlands here. And when will this occur? Um, soon, hopefully, I believe. Um, I think their intention is to perform the work this fall. Um, but I'm not entirely positive on uh, when the specific does, start date would be. Does anyone who's in charge of this project have any idea what the sequence of work on this is going to be? I mean, like installation, I mean, digging in a hole, installation mm -hmm. of plastic liner, you know, hooking the well pump up to it. Do we know anything about that? I don't know how specifically they would be doing it, but you know, in our in our notice of intent, we outlined that it would be you know, obviously the installation of erosion controls first and foremost, and then excavation of the pond, uh, laying of any new utilities, and installation of the 12, 12 inch gate valve there. Um, can we get some sort of timeline on this thing? Yeah, we can. I can try to get a start date. Do you want to see it at any particular time? No, I've seen it before, but I would like to see it again with somebody who's going to point out what's going to happen where. 
No, but I mean, in terms of the sequence, is there a certain yes. spot you want to see it? Yes, I would like to know what the sequence of events is. And there, there's a reason for that. And that is, is that I like to go poking around. And as long as this is open, Understood. we can go onto the property and see what is going on on the sequence of events. Correct. Frederick. A couple questions. Are there any uh, brush cutting plans as part of this that you feel are outside of the realm of of uh, the purview of the select uh, conservation commission. The only uh, vegetation maintenance that's proposed as part of this is just mowing uh, these these uh, meadow areas that they have been consistently mowing. Um, this the pond is proposed within that area, so there's no proposed removal of like woody vegetation and trees. Uh, I haven't seen this spot in in a couple months, um, but. As according to our survey, it's it's the open area, so the only ongoing vegetation. So uh, just to reiterate, though, the question is specific. You don't see any brush less than twelve inches in diameter. Do you consider yourself by right to have the ability to cut the plant and cut into this project? Permitted by the the order of conditions. Yeah, I would say there's going to be some vegetation removal within this this area. And uh, my second question is water under the bridge, though. Yeah. Is uh, uh, would it be onerous for the condition to permit this project based on making the, the fencing around these two ponds more friendly to wildlife? Critters can be easier. I think that would be per perfectly acceptable, yeah. acceptable to, the, to the applicant. Uh, Ron, I have a question if, if you're taking questions from the audience. Okay, Kate. Now we're Yes. Okay. Pertaining pertaining this project. Yep. So at the uh, site visit in 2020, there was discussion of the fencing as Patrick just described, and that was a concern for some people on the site visit, um, wildlife access. And then another thing that was discussed was removal of um, invasives, Phragmites. There's a patch of Phragmites sort of um, north of the existing pond. And I'm just wondering what the status of that Phragmite removal is. Um, I don't believe that's permitted in any ways or means. Uh, you're into the resource area for that pond, Kate. That'd be a whole nother permit to go in and remove Phragmites. So that couldn't be. Um, unless, it, unless, it's in, unless it's in the area of where they're going to excavate. And I do not believe that, that it is, but I could be wrong. So that couldn't be a condition to this, to this oh, request? This, this is stormwater. We could have, they could, they would have to apply specifically to do that work. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We can look at it if we go to walk around. John, if you go down there. I just wanted to touch on briefly the before we finish the, the uh, schedule for ongoing inspection and routine maintenance. That's part of the, the operation and maintenance plan we've included in this application. Um, normally that includes, you know, cleaning of drainage features and things like that. Um, and catch, you know, deep sunk catch basins and things like that. But that's obviously not really applicable to this project. So we kept it mainly to maintaining uh, the existing feature or the proposed features like the gate valve, uh, removing any sediment from that when necessary, uh, inspect it after a major storm events to make sure there's no overtopping erosion, um, uh, dispose of any debris and sediment uh, removed off site, uh, inspecting the existing spillway and clean slash remove any built up vegetation or debris that's preventing a healthy outflow from the, the pond. Um, we would maintain down, the downstream spillway channel uh, as, a, as a clear channel to, to allow water to flow through. So uh, again, just removing any obstructions. Um, that would be the downstream spillway would be inspected biannually at a minimum spring and fall. Uh, and should be inspected after major storm events. Uh, to Patrick's point, vegetation, the ongoing vegetation maintenance would be 
uh, the loam and seed of any disturbed areas or any exposed soil areas that uh, persist uh, and mowing any uh, applicable lawn areas. So that would be any existing uh, meadow slash lawn area around here that's uh, within these existing tree lines and outside bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, so no, no new mowing. What's that? No mowing in new areas. Okay. Correct. Yeah, it'll just be maintaining what's already there, um, avoiding wetland resource areas, um, which we specifically state in here. Um, and then checking the conditions of wetland boundaries uh, and the spillway channel um, for any debris or litter. Uh, inspect after major storm events, uh, hand remove any litter or debris that's found within resource areas. Uh, inspect area for invasive plants at least monthly during the first uh, two growing seasons and remove invasive plants as possible and uh, institute an ongoing invasive management program. How, uh, remove them how? That would likely just be hand removal uh, and mowing of these areas. So that wouldn't include any resource areas. Um, we're not proposing any vegetation alteration within resource areas. So that would just be any invasive plant managed or any invasive plants that pop up within these areas they maintain. They would be sure to uh, handle those properly and avoid the spread. Um, and then lastly, we say do not disturb vegetation and bordering vegetated wetland and wetland resource areas without prior approval of the Stockbridge Conservation Commission. Um, and so we include quite a bit of detail in here about how all these things should be done, um, but that is the main list and schedule of things that will be done on an uh, ongoing basis to try to make sure there's no uh, erosion uh, happening on the on site and make sure uh, everything is according to the order of conditions. So generally in dry conditions, this thing is already captured some water and it's used uh, to pump back up to the property. And, and irrigate. The existing pond, yes. And then in rain events, like we had a lot of this year, mm -hmm. it might actually, the opposite is true, it's flowing down from the hill into this holding pond, and it might even overflow. Correct, yeah. And when it overflows, it obviously ends up in the lake. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. The, uh, the spillway that's designed there has uh, a couple feet of free board, so it could be spilling multiple feet of water at one and time. Does, it, does the Conservation Network Commission ever um, take a water sample out of that when it's full just to determine over the course of the summer what it is that's filling into the lake from that thing that is a catch basement of the whole property? Because I think that would be great. We have not. I think that would be a really, really interesting piece of data to complement Roxanne and Stockbridge Bowl Stewardship Commission Jamie's uh, in terms of knowing, you know, as an example, what one of the uh, what one of the uh, sources of, of things would be. And, and I don't suggest that it's going to be, you know, um, you know, uh, Nestle's pure storm water. I mean, it, you know, there clearly could be some things in there, but I, I uh, it would be nice to know at least. Mm -hmm. Just one comment on that, Patrick, and this is, I'm kind of recluse myself from this whole thing, but a lot of the road runoff ends up down in that area, okay? The catch basins along the side of the road there, outside the Lions Gate and all that area, they all go down that hill into the wet area just north of this pond and kind of settle out and get into the pond. That must be interesting to know. Yeah, there's also, there's also a spring it comes from over the other side of the barns, closer to Camp Mackinac. There's a spring house, and there's a wet area just below that barn. That yeah. It's always a wet area. It's just probably was a pond at one time, but it's filled in. That is one of the second major feeds to this pond itself. So all the runoff from the crest in front of the Bella Hall down around to Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. Street and from outside the Lions Gate ends up down in that particular area. Everything else goes different directions. Well, I think to Patrick's point, however, though, if we find that there are pesticides and herbicides and oh, it's, 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 that sort of thing yeah. in the water sampling, that would give us a lot of information that we've been wondering about. A runoff. And we could uh, we could extrapolate from this. Oh, it'd be a, it'd get a be sense a, of how what, what's coming in all over. 
that the little brook, the outlet of that pond comes out in board, board woods. There's a little really? stream and... Really? Oh, uh, actually, wait a minute. Uh, not, yes, it does. Huh. <clears throat> it crosses over the field, comes out. There's a little ramp type thing down there. It does. So if, if you know, it might be doable. When, when you do a, a test area of all the lake sources going into the lake, it probably you could figure out what was coming out of the those ponds by going to the the outlet where it empties into the lake. I mean, I, I, it could, it could be a scheduled it. event. I often hear, I, you know, I had a chance to talk to the uh, head school, I had a uh, landscaping there who insists that they minimize fertilizer input doing a little bit every other year. And mm -hmm. They're really trying to be much more green than people are getting credit for. Having some evaluation of this water could actually help tank would not hurt it. Agreed. You know, to agree that that's true. Yeah, I think they would be willing to, yeah. to you know, partake in, in that and help sampling. Okay, John, I've reclosed myself if you want to make a motion on this. Well, do you want to do a site visit? Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. I know Lisa hasn't seen it. Oh, do a site visit? Is that what you said? Sure. Looks like Friday's getting busy. Hmm? Yeah, we're done with Friday. Hmm? I don't know if we're going to make yeah, that. The last one is Friday at 11 so far. Can we do it the following Friday? No. You can try, try 11.30, but it's gonna, you're going to be behind schedule. We're not going to be too far away. No. Well, 11.30. Yeah, let's do 11.30. That'd be outside the... Meeting would be by the little red house, so then yeah, it goes down that direction. Just past the uh, Lions Gate parking area, there's uh, another gate, which is yeah typ typically closed. But I think we could get them to uh, leave it open for us, and uh, this gravel road comes down, and we can meet right down there. Good. Well, they don't really have a choice if they want to get a permit. <laughs> 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 Just saying. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, page two. Well, Matthew Darris and Shani Poiraz, did that disappear? On page two of something. Stormwater bylaw, eight Mackinac Terrace. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Hi, Jim. I'm John. What do you have for us? Reconstruction of a single family home and driveway. Uh, yes, again, Brent White from White Engineering for your record. And this is one of the few opportunities that I have to appear before the Conservation Commission where we are greater than 200 feet from Stockbridge Bowl, greater yeah. than 100 feet from a wetland, <laughs> outside of the Scenic Mountains Act jurisdiction, and not within any floodplains. <laughs> Impossible. Under the town stormwater bylaw, there, there's really two uh, categories that trigger our, our review, which is obviously the, um, the amount of impervious area, which is mainly driven by the uh, paving of a, of a new driveway. It's currently just parked on gravel, grass on gravel, um, as well as a slight expansion of the, the footprint of the uh, single family home. Our proposal is to manage all the roof runoff from the proposed uh, house itself with four drywalls around the perimeter of the house, um, it's it's under a half acre lot, so not a great deal of room to work with, but our thoughts were uh, by decentralizing that roof run out there, just gave it a greater chance to spread the, the water to be infiltrated um, back into the ground, as well as a stone infiltration trench that's going to be along the entire frontage of the property, other than where the um, driveway, the curb cut is off of uh, Mackinac Terrace. Uh, the property is serviced by a municipal uh, sewer connection. The pump station will remain intact. Uh, really don't expect any any work in the way of just slightly rerouting the, the sewer force main from the rear of the home to the uh, existing stub that's within the terrace itself. Um, the, there's currently a seasonal water supply that services the cottage. It's, it's not a year-round home, but our intention is to drill a new well immediately behind uh, the home before it's constructed. About as straightforward of a project as I can generally bring before this commission here, but we're um, 
Our goal is to uh, hopefully have the special permit filed tomorrow and appear before. Uh, as soon as that is done, we'll be coordinating with the planning board uh, for them to give a recommendation to the uh, to the board of selectmen. Um, but we're happy to answer any, any questions you have. Do you have any drawings of this yet? Yes, I do. And I'm happy to share my screen. Please. It's all excessive there. So, actually, I'll come over just to the locust map first so everyone can get. Um, stop rotating it. Okay. So, actually, we don't really care about footprint changes. We just want to know where the stormwater is going to go. So, yes, sir. So, again, um, for your orientation, Mackinac Terrace is in the upper left-hand corner of the uh, of the property itself, and then the gradient increases coming up towards uh, where the proposed house will be that you see here in red with a small deck on the back, and then the, the proposed roof runoff will be directed to uh, the four uh, drywalls that I have indicated here, or pardon me, here and here. This is our existing pump station that will remain, um, and then we also have, as I mentioned, the stone trench along the entire uh, water uh, frontage of the um, the roadway itself here to manage any runoff from the driveway and any surface runoff that may not be coming directly from the roof leaders uh, into the the stone drywall itself. Um, it's an eight foot diameter stone uh, footprint for every uh, and four foot deep for each drywall. So uh, certainly significant capacity to, to to infiltrate that water. There are a couple of large pine trees that are of very poor health immediately near the house that we intend to take down. And our intention is to plant apple trees along the frontage at the conclusion of construction to uh, provide some, I wouldn't say screening, but really just to, to provide some more natural vegetation on the property. Uh, the existing house is surrounded by maintained lawn and the intention would be to uh, leave that essentially as it currently lies. The existing driveway is what material? Stone? It, it, it's, it's, it's some gravel on top of grass. So again, when you, when you factor in the, the, the paving of the driveway, that certainly puts us over the uh, increase of 2,000 square feet of impervious area. Um, and if I was really creative, I, I could try and tighten up the limits of work to stay under 10,000 square feet, but it just, it wouldn't be possible to do all the different site tasks necessary um, to do that. So we, we were applying for the stormwater permit. And the new driveway will be blacktop, you said? Yes, sir. Sure. Two minutes to count. Patrick? Good question. Has an arborist evaluated these trees and said they're in poor condition? I'm sorry, I had a very difficult time hearing who was speaking. Has an arborist evaluated the pine trees and, and uh, certified that they're in poor condition? Uh, we've not had an arborist certify those. However, based on, frankly, based on the limits of work, it, it, there would be very little chance for those to survive. One, uh, if you see right where my cursor is here, obviously we've got the right in the path of construction. So there's no way for that to, to last. And frankly, these trees not only are a, a hazard to our um, to our structure, but also frankly to, to the neighbors as well. So uh, to a certain degree, that's that's the goal of removing the hazard trees that are uh, that are problematic and replanting them in an area that we know will uh, be able to thrive um, upon the cutting of the trees isn't because of their health, it's because of a, a human desire to avoid this potential hazard. I think we, we have an obligation to understand the impact to the, some of them are in poor health. I, I'm not an arborist, so, uh, you know, take that for what you will, but understanding the, the impact of the excavation and the root zone of those trees, as well as the location of this tree directly in the path of construction here, um, we would do a disservice to um, try and then leave those trees and understanding in this case here, uh, the excavation more has to do with the uh, with the sewer force main. I think it's going to have an impact on this tree. And again, if that tree were to fall, it would have both an impact on our new house as well as our butter um, to the right hand side uh, to the northeast. But it is your plan to replant. Vegetation. Yes, sir. That is correct. Uh, I, need the, pardon. I just you need to replant the trees fine, but don't blame it on their health, though. That's my point. And, and maybe everything. consider buying some native vegetation rather than... Oh, we, we, we certainly intend to do more more landscaping. Frankly, I think the, the hope is that as the house gets closer to conclusion of construction, that they would likely bring in a more of a landscape designer to help with additional additional plantings here. But these were the, but, the minimum trees that we know that they wanted to plant. Um, and really, it's a matter of trying to 
move this process along with having the, the stormwater permit, the review by the planning board, and then the ultimately a vote of a special permit by the, the board of selectmen, my hope uh, would be the fact that we're not in any wetland resource areas that the, the stormwater permit would be able to, to move forward. Uh, we're already providing a one-to-one -one tree replacement uh, with what's shown on this plan um, right here. And if, if, if it were a matter of the, the applicant coming back prior to uh, conclusion of the house to, to have a, a plan for the, the planting plan, pardon me, for the record for the additional landscaping. I don't think we would be uh, opposed to that, but our, our goal would be, um, if possible, to move forward with the stormwater permit this evening, really as a matter of allowing the process to move forward and, and really be concluded with the exterior construction for uh, for next spring, which is a requirement of the neighborhood. Is the present house still there? Yes, sir. Any stakes in the ground anywhere where this? Uh, it's really centered on where the existing house is. It's 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 you know a few feet closer to the, to the road. Um, we've actually increased our setback uh, to the side property boundaries with the new house compared to the existing. So we've we've really consolidated the footprint more to be centered on the um, on the lot. And frankly, if we were uh, if you see these dashed lines, this very narrow rectangle, if we were able to construct within that footprint, we would not even be required to have a special permit. Um, in this case here, we are applying under 6.1 and uh, with the understanding that um, even though our proposed construction is non-conforming, we're actually in greater conformity with the zoning um, compared to the existing structure itself. I'm not... Is anyone interested in a site visit? It's kind of cut dried here. Patrick, again. Yeah, there's another question. Uh, is there a cutting plan associated with this property? I apologize. I had a, a difficult time, Patrick. Could you, would you mind repeating that a little louder? Cutting plan associated with the property? A, a what plan? I, I... There be a cutting plan associated with the property. Uh, well, we've identified um, with the with the right access the, the three trees that we're, we're intending to cut. Will there be a minimum diameter which you believe is exempt from the cutting plan? Are there more than three trees to be taken down than the ones you showed on this map? We, we were not intending to cut any more. And again, most of the other um, vegetation itself is, is essentially the maintained lawn. I don't expect that we will have. Um, Are you removing brush? Uh, I think the, only brush the only brush I think we'd be removing is right where this dry well is right here. That's an area where it's with the edge of the, the, the existing maintained lawn. Uh, but everything else is pretty much in, in the open maintained lawn area of the existing house. Um, Ron, can I ask a question? Yes, Kay. Are you, it, it's not clear to me. Are you, is the CONCOM going to have a site visit? I hope you are because Mackinac Terrace is certainly an area where um, you, don't, you don't have to look hard to see that it's, it's an area that needs improvement in terms of dealing with stormwater runoff expanses of, of green lawn and so on. So my hope is that um, it sounds like there's more impervious service going in here. Um, lawn is not the best for controlling for stormwater runoff. Plantings are much better. My hope is that there's going to be an improvement as part of this project. Well, I would suggest we, we certainly have a, an improvement on a different, number of different fronts. Uh, first and foremost, there's essentially- oh, Grant, excuse me, my question was, was to, the, to the CONCOM. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were speaking to me. My apologies. No, I was asking Ron. I think we should do a site visit. I mean, does it, uh, I'm looking for a date. Do I want to piggyback on Friday? We're going to have lunch somewhere. I, I can't do five on Friday. You can't do Friday? I can't do five visits on Friday. Okay. I can do it a different day, but I can't do Friday. Yeah, I, can, I, I, can do Friday, I, do I do, would like to do a site visit. Brett. Yes, sir. Next, so not this week, but next week then. Is there any day better than another for with members? Monday, Tuesday? Tuesday? Tuesday's never, well, Tuesday I have Dexter, but that's okay. <laughs> I can do Tuesday afternoon, not Tuesday morning. We can't do Tuesday afternoon. We have to have a nap. Okay. Me too. Uh, you can do this site visit without me. Wednesday. Can't do Wednesday. Do I hear a bit on Thursday? 
Second to Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon. What's the date? I have no clue. Okay. It's the 30th. No, the following week. afternoon. Next week yeah. is the following week. Seventh. Is there any chance for the seventh? Is there any way that we would be able to do that before three o'clock? I only say that because I have a competing hearing that starts at 6 p.m. later that evening. I'd say one o'clock on the Thursday. Okay. Is that early enough? That's perfect. It's the address is Eight Mac Terrace. Eight what? Mac Terrace. Eight Mac Terrace. Thank you. Um, Thursday is the 29th. No, Thursday is the 7th. 7th. Oh, 7th. Thursday. Ooh. 8 Mackinac Terrace. And the time again was what? One, one o'clock. I'm not sure. Are you okay with that, Brett? Yes, sir. See, well, you, see you there. I'm not sure. You guys that would apply here, but it's not about here. Can we start asking people if they do if we'll have these teardowns and new constructions of uh, two things that they plan on having net zero construction if they plan on being solar ready? I think that's plan. I think it's planning board and what? I don't think that's conservation commission. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's that's not who asks, does it? <laughs> that's not us. That's planning board and zoning board and Many of them. select board. Roger, what's your question? I want to know in general going forward if new construction or rebuilds are are net zero or are solar ready. I want to kind of know two years from now, having gone through this process a hundred times, you know, how much how many houses are being built with those standards in mind. And I don't care how we ask and I don't know how we should ask. I'm just wondering out loud. Yeah, I'd also be interested to know um what the original footprint is we had a recent request where we had no idea as we hit the third request what the original footprint had been so is there do you, patrick i'm asking you um can the building inspector get a clear record of that the assessor has that information kate michael blay would have that information the exact footprint and in relation to the lot lines? Mm, that I'm not sure. It would show where the house is on the lot. We, we submitted that with the special permit applications, if that helps. I'm, I'm, again, Brent, I'm asking someone else. Um, Patrick, you know, we have the, the GIS maps. Hey, this is not for the CONCOM. This is for uh, planning board. Tony Board of Appeal, Selectman, we're not going to bring that up tonight. Okay. Thank Aaron. you. Sorry. Um, 86, Lincoln Road, Matthew Winter, Compliance. Certificate of Compliance. Yeah, Certificate of Compliance. You got that too? I do. <laughs> All right. Um, again, Jack Sonoberti from Foresight for the record. Um, so as you say, this is a request for certificate of compliance at 86 Center Lincoln Road. Uh, that's DEP file number 2960473. Um, there has been uh, several minor plan revisions that the commission mm -hmm. has accepted um, in the course of this order of conditions. Um, one being minor utility revisions on May 13th of 2019. Uh, the addition of a, a small shed structure, October 8th, 2021, and then minor drainage structure revisions on May 24th of 2021. Uh, we've lift, listed all those uh, within this request for, uh, request for certificate of compliance letter, um, just so we have those on the record clearly. Um, Foresight has reviewed the site and believes it is in substantial compliance with the certificate of or, uh, substantial compliance. Substantial <laughs> <laughs> compliance. What's, un, what's unsubstantial about it? I, I would want somebody from the I would like to yeah. do a site visit on that one. Absolutely. We're up to Thursday at uh, the 7th at, uh, I don't know, let's say 1.30. Is that working, anybody? Yeah, that's okay. Jackson? I'll be there. All right, let me get this one down. And we can go see Jim Hatch's one place three, after three. that. Yep. Yeah. 
right across. Thank you. Um, is there any other questions I can answer nope. about that, or we'll just discuss it on site? On site. All right. Thank you all for your time. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Um, same thing. Old Colonial Road. James Hatch. Anyone That's here? Mr. Chairman. Hmm? Brett? I'm here for that. Yes, uh, Brent White from White Engineering. Um, we're actually going to request uh, a continuance of this matter here and hoping at your next public hearing that we might be able to schedule a site visit for that. There's a couple of uh, very minor items, but items that I know need to be taken care of before the commission will visit the property. So we would ask that we delay scheduling the site visit till um, schedule that at your next meeting, please. All right. Okay. We're good. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Let's see if, um, what's his face, McCarthy. Uh, Is he here now? McCarthy. McCarthy? Yes, hello everybody. John McCarthy from 2A Interlock and Crossroads. Um, I just need to request the removal of five trees from my property. Um, what, what, what's, the, what's the address again? 2A Interlock and Crossroads. 2A. It's on the corner of Willard Hill Road and Interlock and Crossroads. An old brick building. The mill. The mill. Yeah. It's technically never was a mill, but everybody calls it a mill. It sure looks like a mill. <laughs> and How many trees? There's five. Um, five trees that are that are dead or dying. Are they marked? Um, they are not marked. Um, you put a ribbon around them. We could do that. Yeah. I, I, mean, go I, got, I got John Fields. Um, Who's provided sort of a, a spec on the, on the on the work to be done? Uh, How close to the stream are they? Uh, two are, are are very close. So he's going to have to come in with a a, a crane um, to remove all all five. Um, That's what we're going to want to know. How he how he's going to get everything in and out of there? If the stumps are going to stay, I, I assume. Yeah, the stumps will stay. He's planning to um, use a crane, to my knowledge. We have to remove the power lines in order to access it. And we'll have to shut down the, the we'll have to have a police detail to help with the, um, the traffic diversion. And why? I know they're dead or dying, but are they in danger of falling on something? They are. They're in danger of falling on my neighbor's property. She's the one who raised the concern. Um, there's also, there's, because of the bridge down, there's been quite a bit of uh, um, additional erosion that seems to be happening at that creek, and so it's been exposing their roots. I don't think it's it should definitely be be done like within the year. Um, it's not dire, but it's certainly a, a a risk. And will you do any replanting, especially if there's uh, there's significant trees back there, so there's quite a bit of seedlings that are already there. It's actually probably a little bit too forested um, for the health of all the trees, but. Um, no, the plan is not to, to, to add any additional. Which house is it close to? It's the old stagecoach. It's owned now by Cat Whitney, 17 Willard Hill Road. It's across the creek from it. It's got the big porch on the bottom and on the second yeah. floor. So can you flag them so we can see them? Yeah, I can, I can flag them. Are there are these uh, big um, ash trees? Yeah, there's several ash and a couple of elm. But that's the problem is that they were, you know, sort of victims of the boar beetle. Yeah, I know the ash boring beetle is all through there. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind seeing those go away. Can we get a um, some sort of oh, yeah. process from the arborist? Yeah, I can send you sort of the, the the invoice quote from John Fields that outlines a little bit of you know what the the plan is in terms of the quantity, in terms of location, and then in terms of you know uh, a little bit around the the crane that'll be used to to cut them down. Yeah, we'd kind of like to know where he's going to set the crane up, where he's going to take the trees from, and which trees, and where he's going to stockpile it because he's going to have to put it on the ground so he can load it on a truck. Well, maybe he can load it right on the truck and take it away. So a little bit of diagram or description of how he's going to do this. And uh, while we 
we're not opposed to taking dangerous dead trees down. We would kind of like make like to make sure that they aren't dropped into the brook or something like that. So um, some sort of description of how and where things are going to go would be good. Isn't there a, a, some rules or regulations around transporting the, the trees that have the ash pouring? And yeah. If help? they are indeed diseased, we're going to want to know how he's going to prevent that from spreading as well. You take it to Vermont. Firewood. <laughs> I mean, is he going to chip it? Is he going to burn it? And if so, where? Okay. Um, it's, 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 the basic regulations are you don't take it out of state and probably not out of county, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I don't think he can go out of, out of town with it. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I mean, that's essentially why I've gone with John Fields, because I think he has one of the most stellar reputations for, you know, obeying all the regulations and ensuring that I mean, he's the largest operator of these kind of cranes. So he knows exactly the best process to make sure that we can do this um, with as little of an impact on the, the creek site as possible. Now, where is he gonna set the crane up? On 183 or? Yeah, 183. Oh, great. Yeah. So it'd be about a day's job. And I think it, I think what he's estimated is a, is a police detail for a day. Okay, so a little description, a little diagram you can pencil what he's going to do and where he's going to do it. And when it comes time to do it, we'd be nice. Well, we'll figure that out. Yeah, when, and, and what's happening with the trees that he's taken down. And mark the, and flag the trees so we can see which ones. Pardon? Who was that? Flag, are you flag there the at trees. that house uh, these days or are you out of town? I'm out of town currently, but I can certainly get him or somebody to help with this. So it's fine. Yeah. 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 Big, big yellow ribbons around the tree so we can spot them on the way by. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be there in mid-October too, which is probably in line with the next meeting that I'd be able to get all this stuff together for, so. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Thank God you. God bless. bless you. Um, Stockbridge Bowl, we, we got anything to sign while we're Coming around. We have two things to sign. We have the um, the extension for the Larry Ward Trust and the, um, the termination of applicability for the Kaplan's the rebuilding of the okay wall, which is already done. SBA. Anybody still here? Yes. You're up. Who are we speaking with? Pat Kennelly, president of the Stockbridge Bowl Association. And I have re had requested this meeting because in our pursuit of doing the testing for the herbicide treatment for milfoil this year, we came upon a, an issue in terms of moving the test plots that had been originally designated. And so we had gone to the DEP to ask them about moving the test plots and the DEP requested that we talk with both the Conservation Commission and the Select Board. As a practical matter, since we are two days away from the end of the growing season, it will not be possible to do a stem count or use the proposed uh, test plots that we had. So at this point, we intend to ask the DEP for an amendment of the final order of conditions to move to next season. And our plan would be to do a survey extremely early in the season, mid May to May, perhaps late May, using an underwater camera to identify the areas that would be appropriate for the test sites. And as you may recall, the DEP has fairly stringent requirements of what those test sites need to be. And the main one being that they have to have at least 50% milfoil mixed in with the rest of the vegetation. So we need to make sure that we have that. And then there are specific 
specified divers who will need to come in and do a STEM count of the areas that we have designated. And that would be year one. Year two would be when the fluoridone would be applied. And then year three, you go back and do another STEM count to see if at least in 50% of the quadrants, 50% of the native vegetation has replaced where the milfoil has gone. So the coordination, I believe the most important thing is for us to be able to coordinate with the harvesting because that is another one of the prerequisites that was set up by the Department of Environmental Protection that we cannot um, do any kind of harvesting in those areas that are considered test plots. So again, that was why we would like to get out very early next May so we can get all of those things identified and then coordinate with the harvester with you all about what the new proposed test sites would be. So you're looking from, for permission from the select board and the conservation commission to move the test sites. So that's the basic question here. I don't know, we need to coordinate. I'm not sure it's actually that we have to ask permission, but the DEP wanted to make sure that we didn't have any competing orders of condition while we were doing this. And I believe that would bump into the harvester more than anything else. Oh, by the way, I also have Dominic Marengolo from Solitude here on the meeting with me to help me answer any technical questions mm -hmm. about this. Thank you, Dom. Hi, Hi folks, thank you. What? I think we should be closer to the microphone. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Um, All right, give us a second to reorganize here. That's fine. Yes, yes. Three questions. Um, one, what makes you believe that a that, uh, STEM count that happens in mid May uh, is going to give you any actionable data going into the summer that's typically before the plants have surfaced and you're able to determine where the various counts are. In fact, in your count from early July, there seems to have been a significant movement between the, um, between the mix of Eurasian invasive water milfoil and native plants, since you identified several areas that were over 50%, whereas by the time Tom Ku went out, he noticed in two of your three spots there was significant less than 50%. First of all, Patrick, there's a difference between identifying the areas and actually doing a stem count. Uh, Dom, would you take the underwater part of it? Sure, yeah, so I mean, the purpose of the May survey will be to put ourselves in the best position uh, to, to choose the, the best test plots that we can. We won't actually be doing the STEM counts, but we want, we want to um, identify, identify those areas where we're gonna have the most likely to, to meet those criteria. And, and you are correct, um, the, the plants are not going to be topped out in May, but using underwater camera, uh, we, we will be able to certainly identify uh, areas where that, that's going to be the case that, you know, our, the technology that we use during the surveys um, is more than just visual observation from the surface. So that, that shouldn't be a problem. And, and um, to re relating to um, the difference or uh, the movement of natives and the non-natives, and certainly uh, some observations we made this year, um, we've really determined that the, the milfoil is growing between more, more so between five and 15 feet. Uh, so the test plots will, will certainly not go back, not go all the way to shore like they did originally. Um, one of the definite things that we're gonna do is move the test plots um, between the five and the 15 foot contour because typically less than five feet were, were dominated by native species, not milfoil. So we want to exclude those areas from the test plots. If I, I think we need to focus here on, um, we have an agreement and the DEP asked you to speak to the Conservation Commission and the select board um, as to whether or not we would agree to move uh, to your suggested proposed 
sites. Now you're saying that um, due to the date that you would then again come up with proposed test sites next spring. And I am assuming that we would then again be in the same situation that we're in right now, that um, you would then come to the conservation and the select board with your new proposed sites. And then we would have to, at that point, agree or not to move those test sites. I think, Roxanne, it's more that if the DEP allows us to do that, then we need to coordinate with the harvesting in particular so that we're not bumping into each other on, on opposing orders of condition. Well, our order of condition for harvesting is yep. that we avoid the test and control areas. If they are indeed subsequently moved and agreed upon by all parties, then again, we would still have to follow, you know, obey that order of conditions and we would be avoiding those sites as defined. Um, one thing is I did have something here I wanted to read uh, from Tom Coop. It was about the control area. About the control area? Yeah, because I think you had proposed this year uh, moving the control area. Yes, we did. We had. Well, I'm gonna tell you what his comment was about that, his concerns. So quote, my primary concern, this is Tom Kood, my primary concern is for M. lustrica and other invertebrates, which we know live on both milfoil and native plants, including laying of eggs on the plants. For this reason, I do think the original control area, as well as all along the Northwest corner of the lake should be avoided for treatment. So, you know, he feels that that control area, as originally defined, is the perfect control area. The, and the original one, Roxanne, being one that was more by Tanglewood Beach? Yeah, just the north end of, yeah, north end. I mean, at this point, w until we actually do the underwater survey, next early next season i'm not sure we can say anything is the perfect test site i mean in terms of what tom is talking about certainly avoiding areas if he has concern about that in terms of um endangered species is is always going to be taken in to the highest regard but until we do the underwater survey i'm not sure it, it we can say one way or the other which is going to be the perfect control site because as we've seen, it's moved from year to year. Well, I, got a, I got a few questions. Go ahead, Chuck. Sorry. Um, no, you got a you got a follow up on this, or go ahead. Uh, well, no, I would just note that um, this year, as very similar to last year, uh, the north end of the lake was a very good mixture of both water milfoil, invasive species, and native plants. So. That has not changed in the last two years. Um, no foil habitat. Yeah, the water mill foil was there, curly pond weed, which was senescing in July, and um, native plants are all in that northern end. And I didn't see any change between last year and this year. It's also the lustric habitat, of one of them. And it's the lustric habitat. And that's Tom Coot's concern. Yeah. So I have a, a Chuck, a, Chuck, a, Chuck you're, you're up next, Chuck. Okay. The agreement we that was made between the Backers Bowl Association, the town, the conservation DEP, it was an agreement that we all signed and the test errors were pointed out and uh, everything was done. I don't see where you guys changing the test areas and changing that without a new agreement, you can do that. Um, uh, it's a, it's a lot this, I don't think you can move your test areas anywhere you want because you don't have the information you need unless we have an agreement with all the parties again. And how long, is, how many years are we going to keep changing the test sites until you find out where you can make this work? Um, I don't want this dragging on forever. And you know, it's a hostile time there in the beginning, which we kind of paved out, but I'm not too happy about you saying you can move these test sites anywhere you want 
without our consent. And Chuck, that's that's not what I'm saying or what yeah, I'm are. asking. <laughs> if if I'm sorry if it appeared that way. What we're trying to do is to abide with the requirements that the DEP has put upon us. And even in the final order of conditions, they do make room for the fact that if you do need to change something because of the situation on the ground, they state that you can come back to them for that reason. And certainly if we could have used the original test areas that we had, we would have been delighted. But if we had done that, they wouldn't have met the criteria of the 50% milfoil. So it's not that we want to put the test areas anywhere that we want. We're sort of dictated by the requirements of the DEP of what test area will actually meet their standards. So if you find another test area with your cameras and stuff saying that's gotta be the area and then come time to do the stem count, it's not there, what's your plan, move it again? That, that would be the, and that's why we want to do the underwater camera survey because in order for us to do that, if we get all the way to the end of the test process and now we've had divers brought in and we have to do all of the requirements of the DEP, it's time consuming, it's expensive, we want it to be right. So we have every motivation in the world to get this done quickly and correctly. I, I agree with that. But so when you do these tests these in mid-May or whatever, is all the weeds growing at that time, the natives, the invasives and all that, or is, are things growing at different times where you're gonna not see you might have over 50% in May, but in June and July, the other weeds come up and you got 20%. I'm going to, I'm going to turn that over to my learned colleague, Dom. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, you're absolutely right. This not, it's not a perfect situation. We're, tr we're trying to go out in May to do this preliminary survey again, like I said, to give ourselves the best possible information to locate these test plots. Um, you know, it, and we also have to leave time, you know, we have to do the survey early enough so that we can work together to get the test plot set and then presented to the commission uh, and the town so that we can discuss that and still have time to then line up the, the diver and the botanist to, to do the work. So we're, we're under a time frame. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fluid situation and it's, it's, it's not, it's not perfect uh, by any means, um, you know, but the, the milfoil is not going to go away between May and later in the summer. Uh, you're right. There may be some additional um, native plants, but we, we should be able to observe those as well. Uh, and based on, on past experience, I think if we stick to that five to 15 foot contour that we're, we're likely to, that's the most likely place where we're going to find the situation where the, the milfoil is going to be uh, tends to be more dominant in, in those areas uh, rather than in the shallow areas. So we're just trying to, to gather the best information possible with the situation and the timeline that we're working in, um, basically. So if you're going to cherry pick where the milfoil is. <laughs> Um, well, no, are, you, are you also are you also um, going to, if you're using underwater cameras, how are you going to tell whether it's native or invasive milfoil? Take stem. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Eurasian milfoil is very, um, very unique, very easy to identify, um, you know, We'll be able to pull some of the plants up as well, either with the underwater camera or with, or with selective rake tosses. So, and, and we'll be doing a, a survey of the, our plan is to do a survey of the entire lake, uh, take GPS points for all the milfoil locations and then sit down with that data. Um, or the better. Put our <laughs> test plots together to, to present to the commission and the town. Okay, two things. One, they don't do the underwater part. The UMass does the underwater part. 
So, you know, uh, I was presumed that the botanists there are qualified to evaluate whether it's above or below water. Yeah, it's a significant amount of, the, the actual data collection is a significant amount of work. It yeah. has to be done by the certified diver and the certified botanist. It's not something that we can do twice. Um, Two, Dom, ben, Dom and Dominic, I have a few questions for you. One, you already did one of these, uh, you know, 10 meter point square maps of the lake and you came up with 160 data points of which I believe half of them were medium to large infestations of milk foil. This is in 2018. Mm -hmm. You haven't been able to repeat those conditions in 2019, 20 or 21. Now, one question I have is other competing lake interventions we have include the fact that certain portions of the lake are gonna have habitat related to, to luster because of the, the snail, possibly the bridal shiner. We also have harvesting, a very specific map associated with where we can harvest that was based on your original map, which you were able to then use because you couldn't you know, confirm that it was there. We also have uh, the issue of uh, uh, a four-year plan, which will require that the milk oil in the control area be stable. And we're not, I have no idea how you're going to guarantee that. What happens if it varies year to year in the control area? How does that, what does that do to the, the explanation? And then the final element, elephant in the room for you guys is this. We're concurrently approaching DEP and NHESP and are finalizing discussions about actually getting a permit for dredging. And I've heard repeated times from those guys, maybe someone can confirm it here, that they will not let us do a third lake, a second and third lake intervention at the same time. In other words, we can't do dredging and we can't do herbicide at the same time. The dredging project is easily, well, it might actually happen over summer. It's at least two to three years of planning. And this, project if all goes well we don't have any problems with the weirdly disappearing milfoil is at least a four-year project and maybe a five-year project now look at you guys won the case the court case i really believe that that frankly my opinion is that if you went to the NTSP or DAP and said we need to move our test areas they probably would ignore what we say that's my opinion i'm not saying that's that would happen and give you an, 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 uh, an addendum to the permit. My question for you is, do you want to push the dredging to the end of the decade at best, or do you want to prioritize the dredging and do this in the presumption that we are able to do all of this work at the same time? Patrick, I think that has to be verified. I don't know that you can assume that we could not do them at the same time. You're making assumptions, and I don't think that we can work on that. I think we have to get the facts. Well, well Pat, I asked you this almost two months ago, and you guys have the relationship with the folks who wrote your order of conditions about like, overriding us with DEP. Have you not asked them that? It's a pretty simple question. No, Patrick, I have not. Um, when you and I spoke, I did not understand that that was what you, your expectation was. I just don't really want to waste all people's time and all your time. Look, I think we can all work together on all this stuff. I just think it's unrealistic for us to do it all concurrently. And so my, my thing is, I think that the most important thing for us to know is what conditions will they put on us in aggregate around this, this the, 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 the uh, agenda item is late management plan. That encourages all the, that encompasses all of these things. And I just think if we're gonna come up with a late management plan, personally, I believe dredging is the most important thing we need to do for that lake. Now, I may have a difference of opinion with some in this room, with some on your board, but if there is consensus that that is the most important thing, I think we should, before we figure out any of these, like, you know, these non-strategic sort of task issues along with getting permits, we should answer the question, A, do both boards of, do the, the, the town representatives and your board agree with that? And B, can we do any of this other stuff while we're doing dredging? Because Greg and Michael Nathan tell us we're close to getting that permit permitted. Then we have fundraising, we have town financing we have to come up with. There's a lot of parts of this 
that still need to be put together. And I also have a bandwidth concern. Your board is what, 10 or 15 people are, you got 11 people who care in this room. We don't have the time to do three or four giant projects at once. So my suggestion is we answer this question first. I don't think we have to answer it first. I think it needs to be answered. And I think those two things can happen in parallel. I do not wish to conflate the two issues. What two issues? The issue of herbicide and the issue of dredging. I think they, they, us they wouldn't do it. Now, maybe they changed their mind. They told us they would not permit both at the same time. Who told you, please? David and David told us when we were negotiating this three years ago. So maybe. Maybe we maybe it's changed. It might have. David Follis is no longer there. Um, but again, Patrick, I don't. This is not the forum for this because I think we are conflating two issues. The purpose of this meeting tonight is to talk about our proposed plan to move the test sites, and I do not want to conflate that with dredging at that point. That's a different discussion. But. but but you're more, you're further ahead on your thing. And I'm just telling you that if we, we start putting all the parts in place in this, and I believe you can get an edit to, to your test plan. I believe whether it's this town or the DP, you're, I think that you can get that. My, it's really up to you guys. Would you rather go forward with this first, which is a four year program, and it, it hits right smack in the middle of dredging, or would you rather get do dredging first? It's really a question for you guys more than anybody. Patrick, I'm telling you, I don't see it as a binary choice. All right, let's let's push the dredging aside for a moment. Can we bring okay. us back around to the topic? All right, I, I'm gonna... I have I have one comment, and this has to do with the original test sites. That map was presented to us as as a best locations to treat the mill for it. Now the locations have changed to a deeper, to a, a, a more depth in the lake than they originally were. Was the original plan correct in any way? Or was it just, uh, or were we just sold something? Was it, was it a sales pitch to get us to go along with this herbicide treatment. No, if we had, if no. we had agreed, if we had agreed and said, go do it, what would you have treated? No, the reason why we're changing the test plots is because of the discussion and ultimately the, the superseding order of conditions and the conditions that were in there. Which um, we forced by our lack of agreement with this whole process. You were forced into doing this and found you were completely wrong with the first analysis of what was in the bowl and no, where you wanted not. to treat it. No. You, can't, you couldn't even find it. <laughs> well, I have a question but. here. I have a question for Dominic. Dominic, um, in May of this coming year, mm -hmm. would you be going out and taking plant samples or would you be doing it similar to this year where you just, by observation, observing milfoil and taking the GPS points? Um, I would want to see you actually taking samples because Tom Coop did uh, a survey of the lake in early August this year mm -hmm. and actually looked at your proposed sites and it doesn't agree with it being adequate enough water milfoil for it to be appropriate for your testing control areas. Um, so area A, let me see, north of the causeway, that's where there was a dense area of water mill foil. And that was like 90% coverage based on his opinion. Um, area B, which on your map, I believe was, yeah, your new control area. The supposed new control area, he found that he thinks it's unlikely that milfoil coverage exceeded more than 30% of that area. And like I said, the original control area from 2020 to 2021 didn't change significantly from my own <laughs> personal observation. Um, so I'm a little concerned that 
you actually get accurate data. And then the other one really didn't change much. I mean, you're still in front of Beechwood Beach um, and it just moved away from the shoreline. And I don't, I don't know how Mr. Coot did his survey. I mean, everybody has their own opinion. I mean, he, I, I'm sure he didn't do stem points. He takes plant samples. So he actually was taking plant samples when he did this analysis. Right. So that is just my concern. It's that it's taking a taking a plant sample doesn't tell you what percentage cover it is on the bottom. I mean, we're we'll be doing a, a full day survey. I mean, we, when we were out this past summer, we were only out for a couple hours. We'll be taking extremely more more GPS points, taking a lot more observations. We'll be spending the better my part of the day is, out there. Are you taking plant samples for identification. I definitely will, yes. Okay, that's all I'm asking. I have a tag along question for that. So in May is when you're determining whether it's 50%, is that correct? Well, no, we won't actually, I mean, we, we won't be taking the quantitative data necessary to be 100% sure. Um, like, I, I, like I said earlier, we're just trying to collect as much data as we can to okay, make the best, best possible choices for the test plots which will then be surveyed quantitatively um and you know we're, we can't guarantee and you know, we're we're in a situation where we can't guarantee that we're going to meet the criteria uh, but obviously we want to do whatever we can you know aside from repeating the process of stem count twice um to try to put our best foot forward to pick the best Norman, sites you got to be a whole lake permit now, just so anybody who's watching doesn't understand the difference, the DP only gives out two types of permits. They give out a nuisance vegetation permit, which is what we have for the harvester, which is limited to 10 acres. We got about eight. And then it has the whole lake permit, and the, the ecological restoration is only available for a whole lake permit. So you made a case that the whole lake had an issue with milfoil and that you were going to ec ecologically restore it to the native plants. And that is the only reason you've got a DEP order conditions to apply this on a whole lake basis to that lake. And now now for the second year in a row, you're telling us you have to cherry pick areas because there is not enough milk oil in many of the areas. And I'm kind of wondering how you do you feel you still are justified in having an ecological restoration permit that involves a whole lake treatment. In my opinion, and this, this may differ from DEP, in my opinion, controlling milfoil anywhere in the lake, whether it's 5% or 80%, is a benefit to the lake. Uh, the DEP went through the regulations step by step, period by period, to find you know, everything they could possibly put in this order of conditions. And, and now we have to meet this criteria, and we're, we're doing the best we can to do that. But you know, in my opinion, managing the Eurasian milfoil um, I'm asking in the context of DEP, should this be a whole lake ecological restoration project when you cannot demonstrate in giant swaths of the lake that there is an invasive versus a native problem? We all acknowledge that some of this wet vegetation is nuisance vegetation. We were out there harvesting it for the, for the uh, Josh last week, but that doesn't make it subject to an ecological restoration permit from DEP. And I'm just sort of wondering this seems sort of like uh, uh, looking for a problem. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I am not. don't want to argue the point. DEP has set this up the way they've set it up. They want us, they, they've set their parameters to prove that it's an ecological restoration and we're, we're trying to follow those rules. They, they did that based on 180 data points you gave us that showed a, a base of milk oil around the entire circumference of the lake. I remember the map, I can show it to you. But it's, it's already done and we can't <laughs> do that. So Dominic, I have a question for you. Um, was, was it Solitude that was responsible for treating Goose Pond and Lee? And yes. Yep. And is it not true that you said to one of the residents up at Goose Pond that the reason that there is no underwater vegetation in that lake right now is because you've over-treated it? I absolutely did not say that, and you do not have your facts right. Uh, I would could encourage you to speak with Ken Wagner. He's been out surveying the lake. There's an abundance of native vegetation there. 
Uh, that the, those claims are completely false. I have not seen any native vegetation in that lake, and I'm up there many times. There is. I have been out there. There is. The of, there, there is a. There's a lots of native vegetation. It's been surveyed by Dr. Ken Wagner, I believe, annually since it was treated, and, and that's. I would encourage you to get get those reports from the Goose Pond Association because that is not not the case whatsoever. And may I request we return to the matter at hand? Um, I have laid out what we propose, and I would like to know that we can move forward with this with the understanding that we'll come back to you um, as early as we can in the season for the reasons that Dom outlined in terms of the process that we have to go through in terms of dealing with DEP and NHESP and you all, and then eventually having specific divers doing a STEM count later on in the season. And also importantly, so that we can identify those areas so that when you get the harvester out, you can do that as quickly as possible in the season to give the lake owners relief and not worry about our test areas because we will have them established. And that's, those are our goals, pure and simple. So they gotta right, well, Pat, I mean, <laughs> don't you have to go to DEP at this point because now, we thought we were here as to discuss whether or not we were going to accept or not these new proposed areas. Now we're talking about putting this off until next May. But in the meantime, don't you have to go to DEP and NHESP and see if you can extend this? Uh, yes. You know, Absolutely. Here, correct? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, when we had first started this sojourn in the middle of the summer, we thought we still had a shot of actually getting it done this year. But obviously with two days left in the growing season from this meeting. We're not gonna be able to do it this year. So we have to do it for next year. And you're absolutely right. We need to talk with DEP and get the amendment to go into next season. Oh, right, good. step number one and then step number two is you next season, if that happens, if they extend this by a year, then you determine what you think your proposed areas are. And once again, I'm sure that the EP is going to say you're going to have to have, have an agreement and you're going to have to confer with both conservation and select board, correct? Absolutely. And I would like to do that as quickly as possible and, you know, set up a meeting right now for next June so that we can just get this out of the way and move forward. And somebody in this process, though, one of the leaders, touch base with DP and just ask the simple question to confirm, look, if they're willing to permit us to do harvesting, dredging, and herbicide at the same time, I'm all for it. I am not I'm trying to instruct you. I just want to get an answer because the decision-making and prioritization we need to take if what they have previously stated is still in, in place is a different meeting that we're going to need to have than this meeting. And we're, we're sort of assuming that it's okay. And, and, and I'm not saying dredging should come first, but if, if we're gonna put dredging off to the end of the year, that has implications for staff at Town Hall and for some of our volunteers and for some expectations down the outlet. And I just want the question asked. Then Patrick, I would suggest either Somebody who's in charge of dredging from the town, GZA, Mike, Greg, should approach the DEP and ask that question. And they say no, are you going to be prepared to give us an answer on which you would like to prioritize? If they say no, I will have to investigate it myself. Thank you. So as we stand right now, I believe we're going to make a motion to continue this. Mm -hmm. Correct. I'll make the motion. I, I just want to say that it bothers me a lot that we're going to move this test plot to get the result we want. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say in this room, Stockbridge has 90% people with gray hair. 90%? 90%. <laughs> there are 10 of us here. One of us does not have gray hair. That's my that's my plot. So what's that got to do with the price of beer? It, it is, if, if you're going to move the test plot to say 
I that I can look the whole lake over and I can find this little plot that says that there's 50% milfoil, then I'm going to then treat the entire area. It seems to me I can't decide uh, based on this room that 90% of Stockbridge has gray hair in the same way that you're talking about testing the, lo the, lo the whole lake based on three small plots. Treating them. I agree 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That has been decided by the DEP. And again, we are not moving the test pl plots because we want to. We are doing it to comply with the regulations that DEP has put on us. It's no, 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 no. Now, aren't, you moving, aren't you moving them because you didn't find what you were looking for? And you don't yeah. have those problems. That's different. So if you didn't, if you kept these, if the EP said these are the test pitch you have to keep, you can't do your herbicide. Is that correct? That's correct. So right. you're moving them for the fact that you want to find the places to be able to use this and you're going to go through every length to do i'm not saying i'm for or against it i just don't like this kind of backdoor issue you guys are doing you know, and trying to find places and it changes every year you might find a spot that's going to be 80 percent and next year when you go to do it it's going to be 20 percent. then you come back and say you want to move it again and again and again and so oh, my, my understanding point, is at this point, I think we got to do is you have to go to DEP, see if they can extend it. That's your first option you got to do before we even decide to make another meeting. Because if they say no, then another meeting isn't necessary because you're done. Right. Um, so your next step is to get a hold of DEP, see if they're extended to next year, and then we can discuss what the next steps are. But until then, I think we're just talking a new point if the EP doesn't extend it. And I, th and I think we need to ask them in a nice way that doesn't offend anyone whether this still qualifies as an ecological restoration. Because that is the law. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the application. I mean, it's still the game for us. Yeah, just quickly, I, if I, my understanding is, you know, DEP wants to show, wants us to demonstrate that this is ecological restoration project, and they put this test together with these certain parameters. Um, it does not, it, it just to prove that the treatments are going to do what we say they're going to do, does not mean that, um, you know, they're not saying that going to a full lake treatment means that we have to prove that there's 50% milfoil in the entire lake. That those parameters are just for the test plots. So we have an abundance of milfoil and we can make the, we can prove the ecological, ecological restoration and that it applies to the whole lake. Yeah, we, we, we used 160, used 160 data point map and that was just north of the outlet to justify the, hundred, the the ecological restoration in the first place when we're applying. And I'm just saying that the conditions have changed through no fault of your own. The conditions have changed where maybe, for example, a palletized version of something. All right, hold on. Can we, can we, can I interrupt here? Sure, whatever, please. Oh, it's, you had your test sites that were established that, and you went and you checked your test sites and they didn't have the enough invasive Material to suit your your your. Actually, we your, checked your, the test sites, and then they found out they didn't have the. Right. So you had your test sites. They, they didn't produce what you were looking for. So now you say, let's go to make new test sites that will hopefully prove what we're trying to prove here. Um, but that that all comes down to we have to continue this meeting to another time. We can have. Everyone can talk for more hours, but the, it's this has to be continued. My own, and, yeah. and I'm like, well, go. One other condition I think that you should consider putting on is that in the three years where we've been looking for test sites, if there was milk oil three years ago that there isn't now or last year, they have to have sites that they identify that consistently had milk oil because otherwise they're going to get credit that their thing works even if milfoil waned based on a natural reaction. 
The thing we cannot do here is if we, if we care about the test, if we just throw away the test, it doesn't matter. But if we care about the test, there has to have consistently been nil foil in any place we select for these three places, the test and control, because if it goes away after they treat it in the control sites, it may have gone away for whatever reasons it's gone away in the last two years, or it may go away because of the poison, and we're not going to know the difference. Um, I would just like to add that I don't believe that there's any wording in the paperwork that we go to outlandish links looking for the invasives, that, that it was very specific and clear that it wasn't just, oh, we'll get divers. Um, I think that's a big ask, and I, I think it's too big. And um, that's my opinion, so that's all I have. I think Jay made a motion. Make a motion to continue. I did make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to continue. Wait, 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 wait. If you're continuing a subject, you have to continue to a date certain. A date certain. When do you want us next, Pat? I don't think it's a meet until after they have the approval of DEP to continue this. But they don't have a date. No, not going to set a date. Make it out of condition. We'll continue the meeting based on them getting the DEP permission to continue next year. And then we'll make a date after that. I mean, that's technically a date. Either that or we take a vote on it and see what DEP does with our vote. Vote on what? Okay. On whether we approve the moving of the- We deny it, we're taking ourselves out of the, the discussion. Then all of a sudden it's just them negotiating with DEP again. Well, they don't have a, they don't have new proposed sites. So, you can also pick a date and then continue from that right. date. Just yeah. continue again. You can yeah, do this just, in two months. Just pick a date. And then continue again. So <laughs> like April 1st. Number, so April 1st. Yeah. <laughs> I like April 1st. April 1st. <laughs> All right, wait a minute. First. <laughs> the second. The second. Yeah, Tuesday in April. April. It's got a calendar. But we can in the meantime get an answer on the dredging issue. Yep. Got a date? April, you said? Yeah. So the second is the uh, 26th. No, second Tuesday. Yeah. There's Tuesday. The second is the 12th or the 26th? 12th. April 12th. We continue this till April 12th. I think you're on the tree. Thank you. Thank you. They found it. I'll make a motion. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What else do we have? That's it. That's it. Unless we do tree, the work on the tree by. Oh, Berkshire Theater Festival drainage. That's questions about that. Who's got questions? I do have a performance standard question. All right. First, with Michael here. Pardon? April 12th. So the performance standards, my understanding was what we wrote was going to the lawyer to look at combining with the Littleton bylaw. Is that correct? So Donna had referred back um, as far as the performance standards that the one you had is basically reaffirming what's already in the performance the standards anyways. So Some. I said I want to take a moment to do, but if you wanted to expand on that, she gave the example of Littleton for the board to look at. And okay. she could work off of that to create a baseline. Okay. I wanted to and then bring it back to you guys for approval if okay. that's the direction that the conservation committee would like to go. I, I propose that she do it yeah. <laughs> rather than us and bring it back to us yeah. for approval. So I kind of thought that was in the works, but yeah. yes, we'll make that proposal. Yeah, and throwing out the question of, we yeah. threw Donna and proposed back, Littleton is an example base to work off of, and then to develop the further standard. So I'll have her work from there, and then you guys can look at it to see if what she put in there fits for stock. Okay, and what, right. what we had sent was beyond the regular performance standards, because it included a lot about buffer zone. 
that was different. So just if she could look at that. All right, I'll, I'll look at that because I know her comment back was she felt as though it was pretty much reaffirming what you already have authority and authority. There was a little more. Yeah, there was a little more. Specific to the buffer zone. Specific to the buffer zone. Excuse me, is there still time for ca the Kaplan per permit? The what? Kaplan. That's already done. We signed it tonight. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other business? We're also working on just trying to evaluate whether the authority exists and how to implement it for the properties that were subject to closing. All right. So, yep. You know, yep. Uh, yep. Drainage. Purchase Theater Festival. Do we know anything about it? I I went up there, but I wasn't going to trudge through the. I, I know a lot about it. And it was a lack of maintenance. Problem. It's not only lack of maintenance, but the water flow is not going into their storage facility there. That's, no, the one, the big tank. Or it's not going. Under. It's going, coming down the driveway and going into the neighbor's yards. That's what's happening. Now, I mean, they can put a swale there or a ditch or channel it in some way or whatever, but it's not happening. It hasn't happened. Nothing's happened. Do we remember when that, how long ago that was permitted? I, how many it's years? Been, it's been coming and going regularly for a long time. So Not only that, but I went up to during one of our gully washers. Yeah. Just so everyone is understanding this. The water that doesn't go off onto the Yale Hill properties comes down, it goes across the parking lot and it goes left turn Clyde onto that piece of property that's for sale there. Mm -hmm. Now, when we went on a site visit to that piece of property back when this was in the Bailiwick way back when, we discovered that there were all sorts of broken terracotta drainage pipes on that piece of property. So whatever those drainage pipes were for, they were inoperable. So I don't know who's going to sell that. I don't know who's going to buy that piece of property. I don't think it's. I think it's one of those ones that Chef Evans always used to identify. Just because it's a building lot doesn't mean it's buildable. Right. Well, that's that's exactly what's going on. Somebody should tell Wheeler and Taylor that because I if, think they're gonna, they know. if they're trying to sell it to somebody, what are they selling? Yeah. Well, catch basin. They're selling a swamp with pipes in it that don't work. <laughs> So our stormwater management portion should send something out to the playhouse. I would, come I, would, I would think so. You know, because it, none of their none of their stormwater runoff but, is going where it's supposed to go. But okay, so it, so it doesn't go where it's supposed to go. It goes into this property. And then what happens to it? Two different properties. It goes into that piece of property, and on the stuff that's over here, where the big parking lot is, where they had the tent erected, mm -hmm. that goes into number whatever it is, one and three, Yale Hill Road's backyard. And all that the, the complainer is complaining about is, is that they did have a swale that brought that that water through that parking lot, across the parking lot, and into the piece of property that's just on the road is it like a it, it was just a it was just a, a ditch so and when i went there there was so much water coming down that there's no way the ditch could handle it but the ditch was long since tilted in and gone i mean it, it, it all, i mean you and i could go out there with a the shovel and straighten that out in probably two hours but yeah. well we've been round and round with them a few times on this we don't seem to be getting anywhere. I, I'm not sure if, what. If, if, if the person that owned that property presently came to us and complained, then we have recourse to go to the playhouse and say we've got a legitimate complaint. I'll pass. If they would like to write us a letter, whoever the owner is, or maybe, maybe it could be the realtor right. or Tom. Right. Somebody's got to do something because it's just it's, it's ongoing and it's not going to stop until it's solved. Somebody has to bring the complaint to us and then we'll deal with it. Okay. Any other business? I'm not sure that it's not a civil matter though. At this point, I think it might be. Yeah. 
But we can I'm look sure into we it. Can, we could intervene in terms of suggesting that they do something about it, but I think that jurisdictionally, it's a civil matter. Yeah, and, it, and it might be in the complaint. You know, sad to say. But we agree with them that the yes, it's not going where it's supposed to go. Give it a try. I'd like to know what no. they had in mind when they did the last the the first time. Yeah, the, the drive behind up there, there's, there's nothing there. going in there. there I don't know. There's got a big drain that sticks up in the middle, too. So. But I'm gonna, I can yeah. probably do this. Any other business? What's that? Any other business? Make a motion. Okay, okay. second. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.